Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to your C++ tutorial series. At the end of the previous video, I said I was going to talk about casting, but I changed my mind. So this video, we're gonna be talking about just some review of what we've talked about and what is going to be coming up in the next videos. So this is a pretty good section ending point where you can kind of review everything you did and prepare yourself for the upcoming content because it's different in nature. We spent a big section of our time on understanding the basic data types. And there are a lot more data types. For example, just arrays and vectors are very important, as well as custom classes. We are going to get into that, but we're gonna take a break from types because it's honestly kind of boring, but other reasons too. We need to understand some fundamental programming concepts that are different than just data types. So it's important, but we're taking a break. <laughs> so if you wanna get back into types, make it through this section of content, and then we'll go into custom types, arrays, and all that good stuff. So one of the first things we talked about is what a function is, because we start with the main function. The main function has a return type of integer, which helped introduce the concept of types. What does it mean by returning an integer? Well, we give a return statement at the end of our functions, which return a value of type int. The main function is special because we define it, but it is called automatically, so we don't have to call it. It's called when we run our program. And how do we run our program as a little reminder? Well, we use G++ to compile, which will create a file, which is called a.out. And then in the console, you just put dot slash a.out. You can customize the name of that there using different flags for the compiler. You can look that up if you really wanna make an official app and you don't want it to be called a.out even though a.out is a sick name, totally unique. Then we touched a little bit on input and output with C in and C out. These were objects made available to us in the standard namespace. So we have to prefix it with standard or use a using statement, which we talked about those as well. For C in, we have to use the greater than signs, which will direct from the input to a variable. So we put a variable name right here. C out is different in that we use the arrows towards the console and we give it a value to print here. When we first start, we just have a very simple main function going through examples, but as we go on, we basically use this main function as a starting point and call other functions in our program. Especially when we have custom classes, these classes can have functions attached to them, which become methods. So a little refresher on object-oriented programming. We have a class. Inside of that class, we have methods. So when we create an instance of this class, we create an object, and this object is going to have that method available to us. Once again, we're gonna deep dive object-oriented programming soon, but not quite yet. When we're working with functions besides the main function, we'll typically have three parts. Okay, I got tired of writing. Declaration, definition, and the calling. Now, the way we've been doing it, we've been doing the declaration and the definition in one, and the way you do that is you define your function at the top of your code, so that way it counts as a declaration and the definition. You may see those separated out where the declaration's at top and then the definition comes later on somewhere in the code. Or the declaration is in a different file and the definition is in its own file. When we have a function, we put parentheses here. When we're defining it, the variables here are known as parameters. When we're calling it, it's known as arguments. So when we define it, it's gonna look something like this, such as int x, and then when we call it, we can pass in a value such as five. This is an argument. That argument gets stored in the parameter for the function. That's how arguments and parameters work. We went pretty deep on types. I'm not gonna go over all of that again, but basically we have integral types, then we have floating point types, and then we have the char and string types. Floating point numbers allow for something after the decimal, but they can only be trusted to a certain level of precision. Float is the worst, <laughs> double is better, and then long double is potentially better than just double. Then we touched on constants and learned about three types of constants. There's literal constants, such as a value such as five, <laughs> five, and then there's symbolic constants, which we prefix a variable with the keyword const, such as this. So x here is a symbolic constant. Then we even touched on macro constants, which are defined at the top of your code outside of your functions. Those work as well, 
but I think in general it's preferred to use the symbolic constants. We actually talked about a fourth type, which is to use an enum to enable us to have a constant. Lots of different ways to create constants. The one I'm primarily going to use is right here. So make sure you go refresh on your constants and understand how to do those. And then we touched a little bit on operator precedence and associativity. I think we literally just talked about that, so I'm not gonna go over that a whole lot, but basically everything has a precedence group, and if two things with the same precedence are in the same expression, it's either evaluated left to right or right to left, depending on the associativity. So that is kind of like a crash course review of everything we talked about. <laughs> You'll definitely need to go refresh if any of those are like completely new to you. And then for what's coming up, we're gonna be talking about control flow, which consists of branching and looping. It's gonna be lots of fun. Then I would like to get a little bit back into types with arrays, vectors, and custom classes. There's a lot coming up, and once we get into the object-oriented stuff, it gets a lot of fun. So stick with it, guys. Don't quit. Don't be lame. <laughs> I'll see you in the next video. It's going to be a lot of fun. And yeah, that's about it. So thank you guys for watching so far. Peace out. But wait, there's more. Have you guys ever heard of Embarcadero? In fact, Embarcadero builds an amazing C++ IDE. I'll leave a link for you guys in the description if you wanna check it out, but basically it gives you all the tools you need to build from a common C++ code base and deploy to Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android. Yeah, you heard me. One code base, four platforms, four times the productivity right there. So check it out if you want a sweet IDE with code completion, debugging, user interface development, and much, much more. Thank you guys, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.